What about my love? Seems you have forgotten love. I do believe that something went wrong somewhere.
Welcome to the green side of things. It's your man, Sadiq. And Cassiopeia. And we need you to like, comment, and share that thing every Tuesday and Thursday from 1 to 3 p.m. on What's In It for the Black People Media. Shop at Black-owned and operated Solo Beauty, where you are appreciated and respected. Located at 8158 South Cottage Grove, Solo Beauty can supply all of your black hair care needs. Solo Beauty is open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. Rogers, let me ask a question. Do either that son or your grandson smell like transmission fluid? We trying to find Ruthie a husband. You funny man. We try to find Ruthie, huh? We try to find Ruthie, huh? You heard that good what, Let me ask you, Rogers, what does Ruthie need to do to find her husband? I listen, I listen to her, I listen to her little voice. I like that little passive voice she got. <laughs> hey, she like, I should I know you kind of small, ain't she? <laughs> Ruth, she said you got a pension? Huh? She said no, you got a pension. I'm, I'm, I'm coming down to the... Where you on stage is located? Where you on We down here in Bronzeville. Look, this is what we going to do. We going to get you. We going to do a love connection off the line. Rogers, I want to tell you, man, thank you so much for calling. You, you all downtown somewhere? Yeah, we downtown. Uh, Ruth, I'm going to put you... I'm going to put Ruth... I'm going to put Ruth... I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to get the address and I'm going to come into the old station one morning. Uh, we're going to have you come down. We're going to have you and Ruth in. We're going to have you sit I'm right I'm an early bird anyway. Ruthie, you can be the grandmama, the great grandmama <laughs> of over 110 I children. I love big family. You know what I'm saying? 110. W-I-I-F-T-B-P-M. Yes, yes, yes. Greetings, greetings from my brothers and my sisters. Happy Monday. It is 1110 here in Chicago. We are so blessed, so happy to be shaking and moving. Because that snow was slowing a lot of people down today. But you can't stop people on a mission. You can't stop people on the move. So we just moved the snow on out the way. And we're here at the studio Peace, assalamu alaikum, Habari Ghani Hotep. This is your brother, your friend, Tori Muhammad, your content and digital marketing strategist and your uh, real estate broker with Village Realty. Man, we are so pleased, man. We've been humping, man, in the, in the snow, in the sleet, showing properties for a young lady. And so we are so pleased to be helping her. You make me feel so lazy. Hey, man, get that moving. Oh, you be moving in that music over there. You ain't lazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, of course, you know, we do marketing. We do digital marketing and strategy. We love to help black-owned businesses. We even especially love to help black-owned food places, food and beverage. So we're excited about all the people that we want to continue to help and market for. And one of our favorites, I mean, one of those that we just love her tacos. We love her smoothies we love her tamales man she is man she's like she's like a g here at what's in it for the black people because she advertises she puts her money where her mouth is she supports what's in it for the black people but she's also my (laughs) co-host and look y'all look she's in the building today (laughs) so no more slow response Right, what's right. Actually you know what? See, your voice is so pretty. Can you pull up the mic for you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear a, a little closer? A little closer. Get that mic. Get yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that, get, okay. get, get that mic close. 
I have an annoying voice. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, Good morning. Good morning. What's going on, Sonia Escobar? Good morning. Happy Monday. Happy yes. Monday. It's a wonderful Monday. You know, I prayed God. for you guys coming in. You did. I Thank told you. Maze, I was like, do we have any call offs? <laughs> Hey, hey, every time it's snowing, I start look out there like, I get nervous. Like, are they coming? Yeah, I'm glad we, we did carpool today, so we were smart, smart. Right, right. It made it real easy, and um, we didn't get a chance to stop and get any coffee, though, because, man, the roads was treacherous out there. That's why I'm not even like, I don't smell nothing. Right, right, it's nothing. Look, we just stopped at the gas station to just get something. I bet you deal with that a lot, right? Like, just because yeah. I make food don't mean I have food on me. Yeah. Right, right. I need something on my stomach. You're going to be sitting there for two hours? <laughs> yeah, I tell them, you know, I've left the house at 7.45 this morning. So I've been out mm. shopping for the business. So right. like, I can't go out at 1 o'clock. Let me get this done early. So I was disciplined enough to get up early on my off day. There you go. <laughs> so up at 7 in the morning. Now, we were humping all day yesterday. I mean, pulling in refrigerators and... Ice cream, ice, uh, ice cube table. makers and tables. And oh, you were really working. Look, yes. man, look, the, the pop up, Sissy's Taco Bar pop up at <laughs> the, the Woodline. Wood yes, the Woodline. <laughs> I'm talking about this ain't, she's not just setting up with a table. <gasps> right? It's like a whole, it's a whole demonstration Is inside it the Woodline. It's an ambiance. you going to walk in there, you're like, oh, 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 she's making tacos. <laughs> So we, we put a lot into it. I appreciate my team that came out, support Tori, my son as well. He's our manager. Um, and then Christy came out and helped. So that shows that love. The heartbeat. Support. Christy, the heartbeat. Um, so we got it done. We was there from 11 o'clock to maybe 5 o'clock at the Woodlawn mm, setting up. And that's what people don't see. Nope. The hard work, the dedication behind it. So we're here, and I was up at 3, kind of went back to sleep. I'm like, okay, rest your eyes until you go grocery shopping. So. We're here. I was just telling Tori I needed some coffee, but I'll take some sweet tea. I'll make you some. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what's up. <laughs> I need it. Man, y'all don't y'all don't understand, man, how wonderful it is. See, I've been telling a few people about what's in it for the black people media, and this is like a family, man. And um, I enjoy thoroughly being here. So listen, we got a great show. I want you all to tell a friend to tell a friend yes. that the Tori Muhammad show was on with my co-host Linda Perez in the building. And we're gonna be talking to Legacy Men's Boutique. For all you brothers that need to get your gear right, or for the sisters who want to make, help them get their gear right. And, you know, some of y'all sisters like to even have a little, you know, men's hats and ties, you know, whatever. You know, he just got the gear, so we're going to be talking to him today. And we're going to be talking, you know, we always have to bring in some food. So we got somebody that you're very interested in talking to today, Chef Ra. Yes, I heard him on... Um Another episode, and I just love the fact that he infuses because that's what Sissy talked okay, about. So, okay, I'm here. What was that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, tell her, tell her what it is. She said infused with what, huh? <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, so he does it with what is it? Um, CBD. And so there's more benefits of health to it. And that's exactly what Sissy Taco Bar wants to have. 40 different sauces, but they're infused with CBD. CBD. Right? CBD, yes. So I, I'm excited to have him on later to get more, and hopefully he can mentor me as well. Yep, that's beautiful. Man, we're so excited. We are pleased to have them on. And shout out to, you know, some people who have been supporting um, the Tori Muhammad show. And we listen, I'm going to say this publicly because I want you all to understand What's going on here at What's In It for the Black People Media is a movement. It is an incredible space and place. So we want you all to tune in and listen, and we want you all to encourage everyone who has a business, or if you have a business, listen, you need to be putting some support behind this incredible new media radio station. So advertise. Now, I'm not just going to tell you that because I have a show on here. But tell the people about your experience advertising oh on What's In It For The Black People Media. Oh, my God. It really works. And I really want to thank Maze and the, everyone here because all my customers, what, 80%, 75% between you and Maze, I heard you on the Maze Jackson show. I heard you on Don's show. 
So look, my ego want to say 50 50 percent, but he he beats he beats <laughs> he, me out. He he, he, he beats it out. They, every time they somebody walk in, I heard it on Mays Jackson show. I heard Mays Jackson talking about. It. <laughs> And that's why I want to continue to support because that's where my followers are coming from is the Maze Jackson show and the Bean Soup Time Media as well. So thanks out to Maze and his whole team. That's right. For putting the word out. For so us. we come in a strong second, but listen, that's the beauty of collaboration and working together. And when you have great people with great products, it all works together in unison. So, man, when people come in talking about, I heard it on Maze Jackson show and they're excited about it. That pleases me because I know that you're putting your money in the right place. It would be just terrible to me to be encouraging you and supporting you and telling you to advertise someplace and you're getting nothing in return. And, and that was the conversation we had because before I decided, you know, I came to you and I was like, I want to be on a make. He's like, that's one of the people I had on your list. So you gave me a list of people that we were going to use in my whole marketing plan strategy that you created for Sissy Soccer Bar. So I'm glad. I'm pleased with it. Um, I'm happy with it. And yep. so everyone Listen, your your things are hitting the table. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's different in the, the studio, right? Right, it's yeah, different in the studio, isn't everything. it? <laughs> yeah, you're breathing a little heavy too. Could you just skip that? Oh that yeah. breathing. <laughs> oh yeah, everything um Yep. Yeah. And so that was a beautiful thing because see, I, I knew I pre appreciated the Maze Jackson show and what's in it for the black people. But I didn't know and even realize that you were tuning in, listening to his show every, every morning, morning already. Yes, every morning. So that's what inspired me. I'm like, I want him to advertise for me. And so when I came to you, he's like, well, he was already on your list. I'm like, okay, cool. So it was a connection. It was divine. It was purpose. And I'm, it's all for it. So I'm good. Yep, absolutely. So, so I encourage people to use the Maze Jackson show for your advertisement, especially if you're just starting out in business and your budget is low and you, you're trying to figure it out. If you don't use the Maze and the Bean Soup time, I don't know what's on with you right you must be i don't know what's going on you right that's you're not doing the right thing right that's what that's what that is you're not in wakanda land <laughs> you know some people get scared of marketing or paying for marketing because they feel like they're getting robbed because those are the conversations i have with some black owners mm. uh, you know in business and i'm like no you have to know understand the value but they wanted to work like instantly right away. and it takes time see here's the thing and you know we had these conversations as well right you have to I encourage everybody that's in business, take a marketing class. Do something where you learn and understand the value of marketing. If you are in business and you don't study marketing, then what are you doing? You just really have two things, your product and your service, sales and marketing. Those are the two main components of your business. So, yes, you did a great job putting your product together, putting your service together, but if you're not understanding the purpose and the power and the importance of branding, of marketing, of sales, then you're doing yourself a disservice. And so then when people who know what they're doing come to you and tell you what you should do, you wouldn't fight them. Correct. Correct. Now, you may decide you don't want to go with that particular um, business or that particular marketing company. But if they have the core basic understanding, right, of how to do what you need done, then... Uh, you know, you, you need to find somebody else is doing the same thing, basically. That's right. So, of course, if you don't know, this is what you're about to say, I love that. If you don't know who your target audience is, then the problem is not in the marketing. The problem is in you not knowing who your audience is, who your target audience is, right? So, because I, hey, we've had opportunities and things where one person advertised with us, and you can't say anything bad about me to that person because they got huge results. Somebody else market the next day and get no results, right? What I can guarantee is that we're going to get the word out. We can't guarantee how people are going to respond and how they respond is based upon what your message is. And, how, and are what you, your content is. And, and what your content how you is. deliver it. Absolutely. And making sure that you're reaching the right audience, right? So, you know, if you if your target audience is – old white men over the age of 65 who live in Arizona, then, no, nah, you're not going to. Hire a maze, Jack. Right. It's not, it's, our advertising is not going to work for you um, with our audience, right? right. We, could, we could help you figure out how to target the audience you're looking for, but you got to understand your audience. Right? It's just as plain as simple as that. So, man, we are excited. So we're going to bring on 
our uh, guest here, man. And our brother has been a shaker and mover in the black community for a while. And let's see. We're going to tell I know. I think he can he hear us. I want him to flip his scammer. Flip that screen horizontal. I don't know if he can hear me. We're going to bring him on. We're going to tell him that uh, anyway. So we're going to talk about men's clothing in just a second here. Let's see. Because we are getting to be an OG with uh, this thing here. Look at you. Mm-hmm. Learning the switchboard. Right, right. We're learning the switchboard here. So let's do this. Now, I don't see his lower third, so we may just have to tell people who he is. All right, we're going to bring him on. Man, Dean Muhammad. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Listen, switch. Uh, put your put your screen horizontal. Uh-oh. There you go. I knew I heard oh. some trains in the background. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's in so plain. Right. Did what I? You did I do it right? No, you just went back to where you were. Okay. There you go. That? Are you driving right now? I'm trying oh, to find a park, man. You trying to? You pull over. Pull I'm over. Just, <laughs> I'm in the I'm middle in. of Siberia, man. There's no place to pull over at just yet. Ah, uh, you know what? Be safe. But I don't want you driving while we're talking, man. I know. I'm <laughs> about to pull over somewhere. I'm going. I'm going to park next to this church and pray. <laughs> and pray so listen. Right. Listen. I, I want to say this. Be, I want to make we, you late, man. That's right. I want to say this as we introduce you. So. Uh, we had someone who couldn't make it this morning, so I called Mandine about an hour ago and said, I need you on the show today, man. We already had been talking about it, so let's bring you right on uh, the show today. So uh, he, he's making it happen today, so we appreciate that. Did you go yes, mute? Sir. Okay, all right, you can hear us. Okay, so first of all, you see we got uh, one of your favorite people, your favorite place for salmon, black and salmon tacos, Linda Perez, Sissy's right. Taco Bar is in the building. How you feel, sis? I'm doing great. Good morning. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm... <laughs> Uh-oh, you going, you muted out. Yeah, trying to do a Wi-Fi spot. Can't hear you. Right, so listen, let me tell y'all, as he gets the back to... The man on the street. Right, right. In the... In the field for real. <laughs> so, first of all, let me tell you all. Legacy Men's Boutique on 47th and Michigan. He's going to tell you the exact address. We can't hear you. So, this brother has been helping to keep brothers clean and fresh, man. He has some wonderful clothing. Um, it's absolutely um, modern but also, you might find something that's retro and modern as well, right? When you're talking about some hats, when you're talking about bow ties, when you're talking about some shoes, man, he has a wonderful array of clothing. Okay, He's I'm back. sorry. Okay, hold on. We're going to bring him back in the video. I'm sorry, bro. So, so I apologize. It's just it's, it's too much going on this morning, man. Right, right. Did you find a place to pull over yet? Uh, well... <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm trying, man. But you know, normally you can pull over on the on the side of the street, but the snow is hindering that. Hey, man, it's rough out there today, and the streets are not watching. You can't hardly see uh, too far uh, ahead of you and behind you in certain places. So I'm we understand. Some place safe. I'm 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 I'm, I'm gonna make it happen, brother. I, I, like I said, I just want to. I know you had the the show, and you had to go on at a certain time, and I don't want to. I don't want to make um. Uh, you know, be late. Yes, sir. So listen, you keep your eyes on the road, but I want you to talk about uh, Legacy Men's Boutique. First of all, talk about how you got started and where you were before your previous location and how you have grown. Um, I think we Legacy has been up and running for about uh, three years now, and uh, I was um, I was in this um, giving back mindset at the time. And uh, I wanted to do something for like um, the young men, young young brothers in particular. And so I had started um, collecting um, um, suits and shirts and um, shoes, you know, just just to help them out for their um, um, 
you know, like the eighth grade luncheon or senior luncheon or pictures or things of that sort. Because I, I recall how difficult it was. Uh, my aunt, uh, was pretty much a single mom, she didn't have any bi- biological children of her own, but she had me and my brother and a cousin, and she pretty much raised us. And she, you know, had to take us to like, as they call them back then, rumored sales and thrift stores and things of that sort. And it's not like times have gotten any better um, now. So I, I just wanted to, to start giving back. And, uh, and a friend uh, of mine, and someone you know, um, uh, Tequila Shabazz, you know, was always brainstorming, trying to, you know, make things happen for our people. She came up with the idea um, that, you know, I should think about opening up a uh, men's resale boutique on the South Side. And um, because there wasn't any, you, you know her, she already did the research and everything to prove her point. So um, I thought about it. I thought it was a good that's idea. the general. That's the general right there. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So um, I, I thought about it, and I thought it was a good idea. But you know me. You've been knowing me, brother. I'm, I'm normally in the background, and I play my position well. And um, so I kind of drug my feet on it for um, for a little while. And then one day I was at um, at the marketplace building at um, lo- located at 4655 South King Drive, and I was there to. Um, to get some food from Uncle Joe's. And if you're familiar with Uncle Joe's or most any other Jamaican restaurant, if they tell you an hour, they really mean two hours or probably that next day. So uh, I'm waiting around for my food and I'm I'm walking around the building. I saw this spot that that was um, empty. And I thought to myself that this would be a nice spot. It's not too big, it's not too small. And uh, I think it'd be just right. So, I, um, I, I happened to know the owner of the, of the, the building. I shot my shot and, um, you know, he, um, he, um, he accepted me. So I, I didn't have a, you know, everybody always talk about have a, a plan, uh, you know, write it down, all of this, and which is true, but I just kind of winged it man, and, um, and went from there. So, um, you know, as time progressed, you know, we, um, I take donations and, and the place, if you recall the, the other place, um, it wasn't the biggest. So um, donations were steadily coming in and I was re- literally just running out of space. And so I was, and I kind of, it was, again, I, I got complacent. I got comfortable in that little spot. So I was nestled inside of the marketplace building. So it was, a, it was inside of, a, it's like an indoor mall. There's other black owned businesses in there. But um, I, uh, I was hidden. And um, I was small. I was running out of room. So people couldn't see me. So they couldn't come get the stuff that was in there. So, you know, something had to give. So I, the same owner, Mr. H, he, um, he had a facility on 40, um, 47th Street uh, near Michigan. And, um, you know, it, I, I talked to him about that. And he agreed to it, you know, to uh, let me on in. But it took a whole year to get in there. And then it was other things, you know, in my personal life that took place, you know, a lot of transition, you know, you know, people uh, out of my life. It, just, it was, I think that was about 2019. So that was, um, that was a pretty rough year. And so, but finally, um, Legacy Men's, you know, made it uh, transition to the new location uh, over at 107 East 47th Street. And um, it's been great. Even with the, uh, you know, the, the COVID and the cold weather, it's been, uh, it's been very productive because now I have a storefront, you know, people can see me, you know, I still, I still have to, um, have to advertise and everything like any place else because in the, in the words of the great uh, R.J. Dale, you're going to either advertise going into business or going out of business. So Absolutely. whether you have a storefront or not, but it has been very beneficial uh, being in the storefront. And, um, you know, this will be my coming up. Once the weather breaks. Oh, you're starting to break up. You're starting to break up. Oh, been a bite off. Hold on. Hold on. Is that, you know, it's a that Chicago bad? thing. People don't, everybody don't know what the viaduct is. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's under a bridge. He went under a bridge. Yeah. <laughs> or a train or so, something um, similar. <laughs> yes, sir. So can, can you hear me now? Good. Yes. So, um, so yeah, so, um, so we, here I am now. So at the new location. So it's, um, it's been, it's been great. It's been great. So, um, you know, I'm just looking forward to it. And the, the response has been great. People have uh, come in off the street. So it's just like that's I've been getting I'm getting what I've been missing at the old location that walk up traffic. You know, the people driving by seeing it, you know, it's, it's well lit at night. So it's uh, it's been a great experience thus far. It's a bigger place. It's beautiful. It's um it's a warm, inviting um, look to it. 
it's a nice, you know, a homey feel. So and it's spacious. So and um, I, I just think it's great. And but the store itself, I just believe it's needed. Even if I wasn't doing it, something like that is needed for um, for men in Chicago. And no offense, uh, sis, uh, Sister Linda. Uh, you ladies have a ton of stores you all can go to and get some of the men. We don't. Boutiques so, everywhere, right? This is personal for me. Exactly. So this is personal for me to have a store like this, you know, for men, you know, to be able to come in, get what they need, look great, and still have some money left over in their pocket. Right. That's right. That's right. Man, you got a lot of love over here, man. People been shouting you out and Tanil shouting you out. Uh, when I told uh, Mage you were coming on, he was excited about that. So we appreciate you uh, coming on. Well, that, those, those two are great. And uh, Maze and what he's doing over there, you know, going for self and making things happen. And to have um, a sibling the way he does with Tanil, who has to be his greatest cheerleader uh, to date, you know, even though his, his wife is outstanding. But uh, Tanil, she makes things happen. And uh, But she needs to take my advice and probably just learn how to smile just a little bit more. <laughs> what we we can never get her to smile, huh? Yeah, she just don't smile no. She's always angry. <laughs> I mean, one time I got offended. I was like, Tanil, why don't I have a picture with you smiling? Everybody else got a picture of you smiling. I need one too. <laughs> I, I told her one day. I said, I know I made it. Now I got a picture with you. I'm good to go. <laughs> Absolutely. So you got a question? No. You good? Okay. So. Um, talk about this because obviously there is this um, this this other movement out here, right? Of yes, sir. pants hanging down and t-shirts and you know real super casual wear, and yeah. some people think that looking clean and fresh and suited and booted is kind of out of style. But so talk about some of the different um, age groups, man, because I you know I, I've tipped in and I've seen people posting pictures and it'd be of all ages man coming in to get some good gear so um has it been supportive like that consistently you know it has been and you know it's um and i get it you know with the young people and uh and i still see it as my job to try to grow them up you know as far as um you know that you know to be able to switch it up you know it's nothing wrong with being casual and and but definitely want to get them to pull their pants up you know but um it's um it's important to be able to um to be able to do both, and uh, you want to be able to um, and I want to be able to and it's been a lot of young men. It's it's, it's been diverse as far as the age group, as far as uh, people coming in. And what's the age group? What's the youngest? You know, um, it's been moms, and that's that's and going back to why I started in the beginning. You know, it's for those those single moms and those single dads. That's um that's that's not necessarily you know rolling in the door as they say to be able to come in and. It's it's a I have a client to this day, um, Miss Robinson, Donya Robinson, and uh, she has I've I've actually watched her children grow up, you know, even though I've been there only like you know three years, but she's been rocking with me since the beginning, and uh, she um her young to a young man she had brought in and brought whole outfits and it's been under definitely under seventy dollars a lot of times under a hundred dollars and she's just been so grateful, and uh and and it made me feel great, you know, so it's um and these are young men. You know, um, they, those in particular, they don't come in with the with the pants hanging down. And, and I haven't had a lot of those, but everybody, you know, when, if, if I do get them in, I try to talk to them and, you know, not necessarily, you know, hey, man, pull your pants up. But, you know, just joke with them or whatnot. You know, if they got a belt, I'm like, look, bro, I ain't, uh, you know, I see the belt is on, but your pants are still sagging. Are they supposed to sag with the belt on? I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to get some understanding, you know, joke with them a little bit. So, and I got a Fletcher of belt, so if they need a belt, I definitely got them. Um, I got them with that. But um, as far as the older men that come in, um, you know, you got everybody. We got different different styles and everything. So it's uh, it's been a, a diverse. As far as even the older men, you know, some of them still want to dress a little young. Some of them want the, you know, the Steve Harvey wide leg pants. Some of them want something a little more traditional. So I try to have something for everybody. And I learned very quickly. I um, I have to take my opinions out of the. Um, like the clothes, you know, as far as what I may not wear, because everybody's different. Now, some things I will draw the line on, you know, as far as some paraphernalia and things of that sort. I'm sorry? Skinny dress pants? I have some. (laughs) They're not skinny, skinny. It's been been some brothers that wanted to, you know, look skinny. I'm like, 
that's a little too skinny for you, brother. You, you may not. And the one thing I won't do, I like to make a sale just like anybody else, but I'm not going to let you walk about it there looking any kind of way if I can help it. You know, it's been some <laughs> brothers. It's been some brothers that, you know, clearly they got a jacket and they were standing there looking like baby Huey, but he said, Look, he said I want this. <laughs> I said, you sure? I said, I sure it's, it's no refund. <laughs> You're like, that's all right. I want it. I'm like, okay. But I, I try my best to um to recommend and make sure that things are complimentary to what, you know, their body shape and their style. And, you know, I'm not going to have them out there just looking any kind of way just so I can make a sale for the day. So that's, the, and plus you represent, I don't want anybody to say, hey, where you get that from? Legacy Men's Boutique. I'm like, oh, okay. No, I don't want that. I don't want that to happen. I want to make sure you look great. And again, still have some money in your pocket when it's over with. Man, absolutely. And, and, and you did hit a thing as far as women. We do have a lot of boutiques and different. The store is pretty much us because as a yes, mother, ma'am. I have boys. And yes, when ma'am. I go in, we have a small section. I don't like that. The boys like to dress too. Right. So I have an issue as a mom when it comes to our boys. We're selective on items and it's very small. Right. And that, that's a good point. And that's what I noticed because I was like a, a late bloomer to um to the thrift stores and the resale. So I don't even call them thrift stores for the most part, but they would have a, a huge women's women's section. And then the men's would like be in a corner or a little small room. And then, you know, it just and no offense against the short brothers. You I find my size in the jacket. And then I try to pass on and they short. So it's like it's not a big selection. So that's um that's been a challenge. So yeah, I agree with you. It it hasn't been um it hasn't been a real great you know selection as far as men's clothes. Even if the, if you do find a um uh, um a, a men and women's um a store that's combined. Correct. Man, absolutely. And you remind me of um you know I brought a young man over to you. We were looking for some clothing for him because he was working mm-hmm. with us on Seven Knife and Drexel. And um, he was an example of not um, judging, not talking about what he had on. But the more he came and saw me suited and booted, he wanted yeah. to be suited and booted. And booted. Right. He's grateful. Right. He's so proud. Right. That suit made him a different person coming in. Because it's office. something about if you if you dressed a certain way and. It just makes you feel different. I mean, there's nothing like having, you know. I mean, if you if you feel that way with a fresh pair of jeans on, Tim's or your know, Air Force Ones or whatever, just imagine how you feel if you got a nice suit on, a shirt and a tie, and especially if a young lady's complimenting you. That just you just stick your chest out even more, and so that's that's encouraging. And it's been it's a it's a young lady that has, that has called. Uh, you're talking about the young men. Uh, I can't think of the name of the organization, but she called at least four times. And I don't, if she walked up to me right now and be like, you know, what's up? You know, I wouldn't know who she is, but she has sent at least four or five young men over and um, I've helped out. And, you know, some, some paid, some were able to pay and some wasn't. So, but that goes back to the original mission to be able to help out. But there is one that's still, that's still a client to this day. And uh, I appreciate it. So, you know, and, and it's not about, like I said, if I'm able to help out in whatever way, that's great. And um, that's that's what I look forward to. Even to the location that I'm at now, a lot of uh, our people are um, are less fortunate around there, so they're unable to. They don't they don't have a lot, and so if they come in and they know me, some of them know me from down the street, and some of them have come in and um, to introduce themselves in, in their own way. And uh, if they need something, I I have no problem, you know, in um, in helping out because I. You know, I, I always like I joke and call myself a, a poor philanthropist, you know, so, you know, but it's a uh, it's a joy to be able to help out our people in, in whatever way I can. So this that's right. I feel like this is my my clothes and ministry. That's right. It, it absolutely is. Look, and let's make it clear. We brought him by. He didn't have any money, but you you outfitted him right uh, for no charge. And then, as fate would have it, we ended up getting a huge donation of men's clothing, and we, yep. man, we were able to just give man get that flow right back to you. Yep. Um, but you did that without any expectation of getting anything, and we yep. appreciate that. But you do um, take donations. If people have some clothes that are gently used, right, and they need to get a yes, donation, sir. Tanil, remember, uh, put that in the comments. Wanted to make sure that we talk about that. I appreciate it. Yeah, I don't. I don't turn anything down. Put my collar, but I would prep. You know, I should have prefaced that by saying, but 
you know, if they're able to clean them first or, you know, if they're really, you know, tattered or torn, you know, it's probably best to, to, to dispose of them. But for the most part, as far as styles, anything like that, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I take them all because. Don't bring them no raggedy stuff. That's what he's saying. Don't bring no raggedy stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you wouldn't wear it, don't, don't do anybody else like that. People, right. I mean, even if they're struggling or less fortunate or may not have some place, they still have. They have some pride about themselves. They want to look right. a certain way. And, um, and I have a, a what I call my, I call it my clearance area, but everything is a dollar. So the more donations I get, and I, and I sift through them, of course, and uh, even though I have a bigger spot, but still, you know, my back area is supposed to be, it was supposed to be in my office slash storage area. Now it's just storage. So it's a lot of stuff. But with the COVID and, the, you know, and, and uh, we're going into a year with that now. So it was like people were at home. So it's been a combination of people, if we're unfortunately, you know, making that transition. You know, I've got donations that way. People have lost weight. People have gained weight. People have done spring cleaning and clean out their closets. So. A lot of times I've been a beneficiary of that. And so that benefits my clientele. So they're able to come in and literally get, they can get two outfits with $6. You know, they, you know, you, and, and good clothes. And so, you know, that, and that's a joy. And, and so, but, you know, I know I have a lot of men that come in, they can afford whatever they want in the store, but I have, um, have a group of men that come in and they necessarily can't. And those are the ones I tend to cater to the most. Man, it's a beautiful thing, brother. We appreciate what you do. Tell people the address again to Legacy Men's Boutique. Legacy Men's Boutique is located in the heart of Bronzeville at 107 East 47th Street. Um, it's, if you're going, um, it's, I'm right next to Abundance Bakery. Abundance Bakery is pretty much a uh, a uh, uh, cornerstone in the Bronzeville area. So I'm right next to I'm on the south side of the street. And, um, of course, you can see me with the, the letter and everything. But, yeah, 107 East 47th Street. And, um, yeah, shop on by. And how can they find you on social media? Social media, I'm on um, Instagram under the same name, Legacy Men's Boutique. Also on, um, on Facebook under Legacy Men's Boutique. Twitter, not so much. I haven't really, you know, Twitter hasn't really been, been kind to me. Maybe I'm not working it properly, but no. definitely Instagram yeah. and Facebook uh, definitely uh, has, has, have been good. Sonya's following you now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, Sonya said earlier that uh, money makes her smile, too. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be smiling up right along with Tanil. <laughs> Absolutely. Shout out to Sonya. Her music expertise is second to none. I knew I was a fan of hers, and I heard her play a Jay Dilla beat. I said, "That's it, right there." <laughs> <laughs> yes, man, sir. that's what's up. So, listen, um, man, just sorry, let's switch gears just for a quick minute here. Yes, sir. Of course, um, you have been a very visible, behind-the-scenes supporter and um, advocate and executioner of. Uh, the the vision, the work, and the legacy of our brother Munir Muhammad and of uh, Crow. Yes, sir. So talk a little bit about um, you know what's been going on. Of course, his son is the host of the uh, the show now. So talk a little bit about the evolution of Crow. Yes, sir. Well, we as you know, we lost our dear brother for the July of twenty nineteen. I believe it was so. Um, it's been uh, it's been challenging because you know when you need to you take the engine out of what you're doing it's it's gonna take some adjustment so you know you just really got to rely on you know all the lessons that were were taught to you you know all the the rides in the car um you know all of the um even when he cursed you out it was a it was a lesson in that you know <laughs> so but and you know that you we we've grown up in this work man so you are right. know. You know, Brother Manil loved hard. So that's right. He comes that's to right. Muhammad. He cussed me out a couple of times. <laughs> hey, man, we, hey, if you didn't get cursed out by Brother Manil, that means he didn't care about you. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, um, but when it came to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, anybody can get it. You that's know? right. And that, and that's, that's a word right there. But we have definitely, um, you know, we have, we have pivoted, you know, we, we have to, because I mean, can you imagine us not doing it and he, somehow spookily got got wind of it so you know the uh, the the work has to continue and brother jamil has stepped up as far as um hosting the um 
uh, the shows that we do. Um, of course, we still have our co other two co-founders, brother um, um, Shaheed Muslim and brother Halif Muhammad. So they're still there for that um, that um, that experience, you know, and that um, that consultation. But um, yeah, so it's um, it's been challenging though. But we're still moving forward. The shows have not stopped. When they, even that that day, you know that um, that brother passed. I think it was a Tuesday, and uh, you know we do our normally uh, our normal Wednesday show. And Jamil just came up to me, you know, at the hospital, he was like, you know, well, we got to do something for him because if it was one of us, he'd do it for us. So the next day, you know, we, you know, we, the music hit, you know, choked back the tears and just went ahead and and did it, and we haven't stopped since. So many of the people and uh, and you know even as far as relationship building because i wouldn't have known you if it wasn't for the teachers or brother Lemire, you know so the relationships that he you know laid the groundwork for us many of those people are still rocking with us it's some that have went on that, that comes with the territory i get it um some people have made their transition you know and uh, so but it's on us to um to go off of what was taught because if you know brother Lemire, you knew he was not shy. He built bridges. Um, he made. He, he went out there and uh, made relationships. And so we just have to go on and do those things. So we have to. There's new people coming up. We have to make our own. You know, our own way, own relationships. And so that's what we've been doing. And so Crow is um, is still going on. We're still, um, you know, have the most extensive collection of audio and video on the history of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the total black experience. Crow is located. Um, 2435 West 71st Street. So uh, we're, we're open every day. We still have the um, the website. The membership is still there for those that are interested. Um, like I said, the shows. I mean, the shows. We don't we don't operate. You know, offer no mystery. You know, no mystery, guys. So if anybody want to make a donation, you know, um, please do so. You know, go to crow.org. You know, and just hit that that donate button because we still have to operate and we still we're still supplying a vehicle for our people to get that message out. I mean, we just had, we had you and brother Yaya, either one of y'all could have did the show by yourselves, but you were kind enough to come on together. And, um, and it was an excellent show, man. And so we, it's something that has to continue. We have to, we need our own um, vehicle to get our message out. And so it just has, it's, it's, a, it's a necessity. I mean, just as um, brother Mays is doing with uh, what's in it for the um, black people um, media. You know, Crow, it's Crow TV, but I've been calling it Crow Media because it, it, he, brother, they had um, a vision. He had a vision of doing the, the studio. I mean, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm jumping around, but someone asked a question to me the other day, you know, can you name a, any other black on uh, television studio in Chicago? I said, other than us, no, I can't. I mean, if somebody else can, let me know, you know, so, um, but that's that's something that he wanted, you know, because we was going down to cable access and um, and doing the show. But, you know, cable access is free TV. So you have to compete with other people for time and everything. And, you know, brother, they always, you know, based on the teachers of the honor Black Muhammad, he believed in ownership. And so he wanted something that we could have that we can come in and film and set and do film whenever we want and have the, uh, the ability for somebody not to uh, the, the ability for somebody not to say, well, you know, you got to leave or you got to come in or it's hard time or, you know, we shutting it down earlier today. Nah, so we got our own. And so we're able to um, to make things happen when we want. So when you got your own, you can call, call your own shots. But we want to be able to get our message out the same way CNN bombard us with breaking news. And it's the same story they just talked about five minutes ago. And it's not even a, in addition to it. It's just the same old you know, food reheated. That's right. And so the same way they bombard us, we have to take a story or a narrative that we want that's good for our people and continue to, you know, to put that message out there. Because this is the information age, as they say, and those that have the information have the power. That's right. As you already know, our people don't have no information, no power, and no idea what's going on. It's just getting worse. That's right. And, and brother Mandina, I, I hope have I to, your question. I know I went a long ways. <laughs> good question. Good answer. Good answer. And I got it. I got it. I want to give you some props, man, because, um, and man, in 20 years, 20 plus years, it was a rare occasion when I saw Munir and didn't see you. I mean, an extremely rare occasion. You were always there to make sure that whatever was going on, 
um, that you took care of the nuts and bolts of whatever, yes, whatever, whatever he was doing, whatever mission, whatever project. Um, we we know we definitely those who know who see you always making stuff happen. Yes, sir. and I'm gonna go out on a limb here because some people may not understand this, right? But because they because they know they knew Manier in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Manier was actually very humble. Yeah, <laughs> it may not appear he may not appear to be humble, but I have walked with him downtown Chicago. Yeah. And I've seen the politicians yeah. bow down to him. I saw judges bowing down to him. I saw, yes, and when you talk about media, he is one of the very few independent media outlets, Crow TV, that could get a a, a current media personality from a major mainstream media outlet to come and sit down and let him interview, get interviewed. Yeah. You yeah. very rarely do media personalities man. allow themselves to be interviewed because their station does not allow it. But Maneer, yeah. man, he man, he he made stuff happen, man. That you that just it was not the norm. <laughs> it was he was and he he was humble, but he um but he understood. He always would talk about the community itself, and he said uh, he, he would say that the ego is part of that community. That's right. <laughs> have to learn to keep it in check. Now he he would stick his chest out when he had to. But um, but yeah, he um, he, he he was he was misunderstood. Like I said, he loved hard, and um, and he always fought for the underdog. And um, if he was on your side, he would he would be on your side. And sometimes, to my chagrin, he would go overboard for you. I could I be thinking, I'm like, man, these Negroes don't deserve all this, man. You you doing a little too much, you know. So, but it, you know, that's just just the way he was. But yeah, I man, it was it was fascinating that you know um. He didn't have, um, he didn't go to school for journalism or anything like that. He just had the gift of gab. He had the teaching of the honor black mommy, and he was already a go getter prior to that. And once you get the teachings of the honor black mommy, it's going to ins- enhance whatever it is you're doing. If you're a salesman, you're going to be a top salesman. If you're a thief, you're going to be a better thief. But you know, you just gotta you gotta choose wisely. So. The the type of people that that will come through those doors, man, it was. I mean, look, we we've been to different governors, you know, from Ryan to Bogoyevich, even Prisker, uh, pro, yeah, yeah, Prisker, um, the mayor. I mean, I never forget. Barely walked in by himself, no security. He just walked on in. You know, security was out in the car, but he just walked on in. Nobody came. No no advance team or nothing. He came in, had a tour of Crow, you know, then he got to talking about how his father really admired Donald Blige Muhammad and everything. Of course, you know, we, and if you know Manir, we got the pictures to prove it. So, I mean, you know, even to the, you know, not only the, the judges, but just people of, of renown, you know, I mean, God, I mean, for the minister to start what he's doing, you know, not, not just to do a show, but just to come get a tour of the place prior to it opening up, you know, for those little candid talks that those little mm-hmm. meetings that he would that brother Manil would, facil- would facilitate brother Manil was a master facilitator and the type of meetings that he you talk about the journalist i remember that when he took um what was it uh, uh charles thomas um jordan mm-hmm. was what's the name jordan from channel nine uh davis from channel two and i think it was one other person over to see the minister he would always do something like that always facilitating things so and it was like, it was people, I mean, Paul Mikey would come down to the studio. The like you said, not just the black journalists, but the white ones too. You know, and, and uh, Flanagan, you know, all of these guys would, would come mm-hmm. on. It's just, it was it was something, man. I would just, um, I, after a while, I just, it would become the norm. You know, I right. wouldn't even be surprised, you know, who would come through the door. So. Man, so we appreciate, man. We appreciate Munir and the support that you um, and Crow has done for our community. So listen, yeah. this, I don't need no excuses from you tomorrow because uh, you out here in that snow right now. So <laughs> Sissy's Taco Bar pop up is coming up. <laughs> hey man, I'm looking forward to it, man. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. So now we go, we gonna make that happen. So I, I'll, you know, you know she's at the Woodline uh, now. Absolutely. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. You know that. You know that. 
yeah. And I just think it's, it's, it's so great for them to even do what they're doing. They already have a, a, a facility themse- themselves. And to allow the sister to come in, that says a lot about her. And it says a lot about whoever, you know, y'all negotiated too, you know, for like, you know, because, you know, to bring somebody else in, you already got something going on like that. So that says a lot, but the food is great. And what is it you, you said you wanted me to try, sis? The, uh, what is the, the, what was that? The uh, Nopales. Cactus. Yeah. The Tom the Girl taco. taco. The Tom Girl. But also, you got to try that um, Cajun Jack because I put a different twist to this too. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's delicious. I just went to the store and brought a bunch of um, Cajun Jack this morning. Okay. All right. But I'm, I'm going to have my salmon taco as a backup, though. I so. know, right? Right. So, yeah, <laughs> get, the, get a variety. <laughs> So, yeah. they, man, they're good. They're definitely, you know, of course, they're plant-based, and it's a whole plant. It's not, um, you know, some, you know, process. It's, 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 it's the plant, and uh, it's actually pretty good, man. I think you're going to enjoy it. Okay. I'm looking forward so to it. So now we also sell them individual. So people were requesting that the last time we were doing our pop-ups. Before, it was okay. three for 10 or three for 14. So now you can buy them individually as well. Oh no, I ain't gonna teach you now. We're gonna we're gonna come on in and get uh, several of them at one time. We we're gonna do like Sister Christy do and just come on in and grab them and go in the corner and eat them. Yes. Right, that's right, that's right. So, <laughs> man, Sonia, let me tell you. She's she she's doing I'm something so with hungry. that. She's doing something with that with that <laughs> with that no pales. It is really? man, describe it. Describe a little my bit favorite, of how you make it. Don't give it away. Don't give away the whole thing, but describe how you make it. Cause it's you add onion? Well, yes. Oil. It's a, not to cook it. Mm. So how we cook it is vegan eggs, and we do we dip it with Mexican mm. hot sauce. And so it kind of sits in that for a second. <gasps> then we pull it out, and we put it in breadcrumbs, and then we put it in an air fryer. <gasps> so you have Flavorful. nice, crispy, yes. Yes. And you have your seasons. I can't tell you in the seasons, but we have that. <laughs> and then you put it on a, your tail, tortilla, and then we have this cilantro onion sauce that we make, and it's creamy. But you still have mm. a little bit of texture in it. It's magical. Okay, man. Oh, oh and it's man. So man, it's Dane, so it's fire. It's, it's delicious because <laughs> See, I was the just way she's Christy. describing it, I mean, were you passionate about something like that? Okay, I may have to just try that. Take a chance to try that without the, the salmon as a backup. Yes, it, and <laughs> the kids love it, and the youngest was the children. Eight. Eight years old, so he's like, "Oh my god!" So they had seconds and seconds, and it was like going back. And then I think I had to go back out and buy more, and then I had one of my kids try to. You know, Children. cricket, and they was cutting myself and pinching myself. I'm like, you guys got to <laughs> oh, have, like, four no. little gloves on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're teaching them how to prick it, cut it, slice it. But, yes, it's <laughs> delicious. I'm excited. Um, I think that's why I'm so ain't. I have anxiety for the last week, and I keep waking up at 3 every day. And it's tacos on my mind. It's what I can do, and how can I make it better? Oh, wait, you can do this. Nope, change this. Your customers are gonna love it. So I'm excited for you, sis. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's well deserved, and this this is just gonna be another stepping stone before you you know we see that uh, sissy's taco truck out and about, you know, making things happen. So, excuse me, I, I, I'm I'm looking forward to it, and you definitely have my support. Yes, man, we definitely appreciate that, man. You definitely were coming by the other pop up, getting that salmon taco. So we're gonna oh, we're gonna no, help no. you explore a little bit and get get some of those other ones and taste those as well. Uh, but um. Man, so you tell people again where they can find you and how to find you on social media and your website. Well, let me let me make sure that I wouldn't have the store without Crow. So Crow definitely check us out. Uh, Crow TV <clears throat> every um the Munir Mama show every Monday through Friday, one o'clock and six o'clock on Channel Twenty Five in Chicago. Our our main show, Mama and Friends, still comes on every Sunday night at 7 30 on uh, channel 19 we stream live every uh, wednesday at uh, six o'clock central standard time and uh, sunday at 2 30 central standard time and just go to crow.org and click on the um the crow tv link and uh, for more information just call crow 773-925-1600 and um uh, legacy men's boutique you know um uh, we have um whatever men wear we sell you know um we try to make sure that you can come in and get what you need and still have some money in your pocket. We uh, have um, quality clothes and accessories at, at thrift store prices. And so um, the address to Legacy Men's Boutique is uh, 107 East 
47th Street. Um, it's right in the heart of Bronzeville. You can um, check our website, LegacyMensBoutique.com. And, um, yeah, we open Monday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, lately, with the, the cold and the winter, we've been closing about 6, so you can always um, give us a call prior to that. The phone number is uh, 872-228-1871. Um, just to make sure I don't, uh, I, I don't bail out on you before you come through. So, but yeah, come on through, shop on by. Man, beautiful, man. Man, Dean, we appreciate you, man, for coming on the Tori Muhammad show. Linda, you had any more questions before? No, none at all. All right. So no, listen, I appreciate uh, you all for what, what you're doing, brother Tori. You, you've been on the case for many years, brother. You've been consistent and, um, you know, you, you don't get to the prop your props as you should all the time. And I just want you to know that you've been consistent. You know, you've done everything from being a, a author to promoting restaurants and everything in between. So, you know, people need to definitely support you as well. So I, I appreciate you even thinking about me and allowing me to come on and um, and uh, and talk about what I do. Thank you, brother. And thank Man. you, sister. Um, Absolutely. I received that. I appreciate that. And I feel the same about you, brother. So we are all we got, like uh, CMB. Yes, sir. What was that? New Jack City, man. We New all Jack we City. got. Yes, sir. <laughs> minus, minus the crack pipe. But we right, minus the crack pipe. <laughs> <laughs> but I got you, brother. Brother and sister, whatever y'all need on my end, just let me know. I got you. Absolutely, man. We appreciate you, man. We'll be talking to you soon. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. All, all right. right. We're going to go to a quick I'm break, back. and uh, we're going to be right back with more <laughs> of the Tori Muhammad Show with my wonderful co host uh, Linda Perez, Sissy Taco Bar, in the building, in the build. I can look to my right and see her now. All right. <laughs> Shop at Black Owned and Operated Solo Beauty, where you are appreciated and respected. Located at 8158 South Cottage Grove, Solo Beauty can supply all of your black hair care needs. Solo Beauty is open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. What's in it for the black people? That which we invent, of course. Let's see if we could list some black inventors using the letters W-I-I-F-T-B-P. Here it goes. J.T. White invented the lemon squeezer. A.C. Richardson made an insect destroyer gun. Isaac Johnson made improvements to the bicycle frame. Robert F. Fleming Jr. made the guitar. Valerie Thomas hit us with the illusion transmitter. Ow! Purdy Azagua gave us the folding chair. Now, go create some stuff. Make us proud, black people. It's legacy time. And I'm black, y'all. And I'm black in the black because I'm black. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the green side of things. It's your man, Sadiq. And Cassiopeia. And we need you to like, comment, and share that thing every Tuesday and Thursday from 1 to 3 p.m. on What's In It for the Black People Media. You are listening to the most dangerous show in the morning. Live on the line, we have the newly appointed state Senator Doris Turner. Welcome to the Mays Jackson Show. How are you, Senator Turner? Good morning, good morning, good morning. I really feel like I have arrived now that I'm on the Mays Jackson Show. It's a dream I never thought would have. You know, in every office that I have held, I served 10 years on the Sangamon County Board, then I, I served two and a half terms on the Springfield City Council. And in each one of those positions, I have never represented a district that was a minority majority district. But every day I've gone to work to ensure that African Americans in those districts receive equitable treatment and that the legislation that I pushed was beneficial to the entire district but beneficial to the African Americans that lived in that district because these are people that for too long have not had a voice. When I was there and I was their voice, I wanted to make sure that everything that I did was going to move my community forward. And that's always been first and foremost in my mind and that will continue to happen. If you look at ordinances and legislation that I have championed, drafted and passed, you will see that thread running through there. Everything that happened with the uh, legalization of cannabis in Springfield, I led that and, and came out of that with a lot of 
successes. And one of the things that I am most proud of that came out of that was we put the 3% of municipal tax on there, but one and a half percent of that money will always go to a very specific area of Springfield that is the heart of the east side. You mentioned cannabis, but what we've seen is that there has been no access to cannabis for black folks. We've had to go back and do two fixes already. I think that everyone knew that that was going to happen. But, you know, going forward, it's one of those things that, you know, when you know what you know, you know. There'll be more eyes and ears on a lot of things. So I am very committed to that. Mays Jackson. Mays Jackson. Tuned in to Minding Our Black Owned Business here on What's In It for the Black People Media. Ms. Jamalita Tillman. The great thing about what we do at the Harold Washington Cultural Center is that it doesn't just resonate on the South Side, in Chicago, in Illinois, in America. We're in 12 different countries with emergency preparedness programs for institutions and theater schools, as well as curriculum and stage plays. We are the only theater in the country that takes a delegation of students to the Tony Awards every year to get the full Tony experience. So that's everything from seeing a play to hanging hanging out with Broadway actors to going to the Grand Gala at the Plaza Hotel after. I'm very proud of that. And when I say the only theater, I don't just speak for black. I'm talking the only theater that pays for everything. We book their flights. We get them dressed, we put them in hotels, we feed them, and we burn them out because when we go to New York for the Tony Awards, and for those who don't know, the Tony Awards are the highest coveted award for Broadway musical theater. It's like the Grammys of theater. That's a huge deal because one, it's not cheap to do that. Two, this is something that even those that are professionals, there are people in Broadway who've never attended the Tony. So that's one of the things I'm very proud of. W-I-I-F-T-B-P-M I'm trying to catch that tune. Is that Talib Kweli? Is that a little bit, little bit? <clears throat> Sound like a little black star in there. They're my people there. They're my people. I love them. So, man, we are back. This is the Tori Muhammad Show, and I have... Linda Perez, your co-host. <laughs> the one and only. This is Taco Bar. She said it's different. The show hit differently when you in the studio. <laughs> sure does. Man, so we are pleased to have you on today um, as my co-host and uh, looking forward to many more. Listen, we want to, man, give a a quick word, man. Melvin Muhammad. And listen, we still got to get him in here. I've been moving around a little bit, so we've been crossing, uh, crisscrossing our paths. But we have to get him in here because he has advanced technology in the fight against COVID-19 and the pandemic. He has um, products NASA, they use them in space, and, you know, they really help keep the air clean and um, uh, sanitized. And he has them for your home. He has them for your office. Um, uh, Businesses can use these things to make it um, even easier. Of course, you got to keep wiping stuff down to make sure that your surfaces are clean. But he has some products that can help with even making sure the air is, and it protects um, surfaces for a certain period of time. Absolutely phenomenal product, 99.96. So I want you all to uh, give us a call, DM me, or call me at 773-531-8798, and I can get you in touch with him. I don't have the number right in front of me, so I'm giving you my number. If you need to get information on him, call me, and I'll make sure that you connect uh, with him um, expeditiously. Shout out to Sean Michelle's Homemade Ice Cream. Uh, you know they are people. We love them. Uh, we love their banana pudding. We love so much about Sean Michelle's. And we always want to make sure we mention them and show them some love because they uh, show us love in return. And, of course, Brown Sugar Bakery. Cannot forget Brown Sugar Bakery, where life is sweet. So, listen, man, all of our businesses, if you are struggling trying to figure out how to reach your audience, 
And if you appreciate the programming here on What's In It For The Black People Media, like Sissy's Taco Bar, I'm encouraging you. Listen, if you're looking to reach black folks in the city of Chicago who are educated, who love themselves and want to support black-owned businesses and always looking for something new and interesting to support, then this is where you should be putting some of your advertising dollars. Listen, it's not going to break the bank. It's going to be actually very affordable, and you would actually be surprised on how affordable it is. Shout out to Africa Porter, who was tuning in, showing her love. She also said that money makes her smile. And uh, I believe Sadiq just tuned in with those vegan options. Uh, what are you talking about, Sadiq? You talking about Sissy's Taco Bar? Yes. Oh, he was not He was not here a minute ago. Tell him about the vegan options that you have along with. He knows about Tell the jackfruit. You explained it so well, Tori, for Sissy's Taco Bar. You have so, that voice. Go ahead. <laughs> Sadiq, now you know about the Cajun Jack. Oh, that vegan man that put in ice cream. Oh, yeah, that vegan man that put in ice cream, Shaka. It's delicious. So, Wait a minute, who has vegan? Sean Michelle's has vegan ice cream. They have like six or seven How flavors. You know oh, yeah, because you're not vegan. <laughs> <laughs> you know. See, she didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Yes. Never advertised it. Listen, and again, see, I, because I'm not vegan and I say that, it has to be good. You just can't, it is saying, you know, some people just going to eat it because it's vegan. And, you know, they, they're focused on health. And I, I get that. I respect that. But, you know, I eat chicken. I eat fish. And so I'm, but I understand the value of non-dairy. So, but it still, it has to be good for me to indulge so in we'll it. We'll be going over there after the show. There's a couple of places we're headed out to. Yeah, this is, uh, is going to be world tours after the show. Right. Oh, Sadiq knew. Sadiq, yeah, we know you knew. You know where every place is. Sadiq, Sadiq would love to bust my bubble sometimes. I might post something that was good that I had, and this he man, I'm, this is the pitch is delicious, and I'm talking about how good it is. He like, is it vegan? <laughs> is it vegan? I must say, Sadiq, when we were at the tax office and we were talking about eat to live, right? Sadiq, I learned a lot just from small conversations, right? And I you appreciate know, appreciate those conversations though. That's right, and and Sadiq is a vegan of my own heart because. It's got to taste good for him, too, right? There's a problem when um, you eat something and it's not delicious. And, of course, people on different spectrums, so I get this. People can talk about us like they talk with who eat pork. Well, Mom, I, I can eat my pork because it's got to taste good, right? <laughs> right, you know. Horrible. So. <laughs> Just horrible. That's, that's how I feel some people who eat pork talk. And not, uh, not all of them. <laughs> I'm not going to call me a porkist. Don't call me discriminating. Um, I love you. I just hate the pig. So, but anyway, so Sadiq, she has produced a nopales. Now, nopales, it scares people, right, if they don't know what it is uh, because it's a different language. And if, even if we tell you what it is, you may have a problem with it because you've never had it before. Now, now forget about the fact that some people can eat some of the most horrendous stuff, right? <laughs> Just they know they smoking cigarettes. They 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 eating flaming hot. They eating all kind of foolishness. But then when you start talking healthy, they go, well, "What's in it? <laughs> what's that made out of? <laughs> how does it taste? Right? Well, I'm gonna how does it taste? Right? You sitting there eating cardboard with some with some red dye on it to make it hot, and you okay with that? Right? <laughs> You're not investigating. You're not reading that cereal box and all the. How can a cereal box have twenty five thousand ingredients? <laughs> I remember my science teacher used to tell me, she said, eating cereal is eating a box, a cardboard box. A cardboard. Everybody knows eat the outside the box, too. So, Sadiq, I know we're getting to it. We're getting to it, Sadiq. So, this is made, actually, out of cactus. And it's a very popular taco um, in uh, Latin America, in the Mexican community, and they call it nopales, right? So, of course, the cactuses are very prevalent, and it's um, a great source it, it, it's it's like it's it's a little sweet. It's almost like a pear, right? Like a like a light sweet pear, right? In terms of just how it tastes in general. But now, when you sissify, when you sissify that cactus, that's a new word. I'm making this up just for I know what y'all thinking, but I'm talking about Sissy's Taco Bar sissifies, sissifies <laughs> these menu items, right? So she put that sissy on it, right? So. Um, it's breaded, 
Right. She uses a course of for the his vegan, so she uses a vegan um, egg substitute mm-hmm. to give it that coating so that that bread uh, that breading will attach to it. And uh, she has her secret sauce in there. You know, KFC ain't the only one got a secret ingredient, right? So she puts her secret mix in there and then air dries it. And it's an air fryer, right? Air fryer, correct. So, man, when this thing comes out, not only does it look beautiful, but then she adds that uh, that sauce with the uh, cilantro and onion. She she blends that up together. It's like almost like a little uh, pate, a base or whatever. And so that just helps to pull the um nopales the, the 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 meal together in that taco and it's a it's man you it's a little crunchy it's a little sweet um it is absolutely delicious and you put that with a little sour cream on there i'm telling you you're going to you're going to walk out you're going to finish that taco and you're going to be walking down the street whatever street you may find yourself on looking for somebody to smack you just you just going to be I mean, you just, well, you're going to be looking. And when you smack them and you tell them why you smacked them, because you just had a, now, she's not calling it no, no, she's not calling it no pilot. She's calling it the time girl. Now, why you call it time girl? Because, Tori, it kind of reminds me of me growing up being a time girl, time boy, but the outdoors kind of rough on the outside, but sweet inside. So, time girl. There it is. The time girl taco. Listen, when you come to Sissy's Taco Bar for the new pop-up, which is going to be starting tomorrow at 1200 East Woodline, 1200 East 79th Street at the Woodline, ask about the Time Girl Taco. You are going to be so pleasantly pleased and surprised to have that taco. So that's the new vegan option, Sadiq. So along with the jackfruit uh, taco, we, we, it's called the Cajun Jack, right? The Cajun Jack Taco, which is... Oh, man, listen, listen, Africa, Sadiq, everybody who had the Jack, Cajun Jack Taco before, Sadiq and Case tried it on their show here at What's In It For The Black People, right? Africa and Sadiq. Africa, I'm sorry, Africa and Sadiq. And then, um, and right, and Sonya had it too, right? Mm -hmm. It was good, right? Changed my view on plant-based slash veganism. Now, listen. Because it tasted like a taco de pastor. Like a who? El Pastor. El Pastor. Taco. Mm-hmm. Pork. 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 Oh, pork gotcha, and onions, gotcha. Pork and onions. Right, pork and onions. Okay. So, um, gracias. <laughs> so, that Cajun Jack taco, y'all can see my hand, right? It was already here. What she's done to it is taking it up. She done, she done, she done 65 squared that taco. <laughs> I did, I did. I'm so proud. But you guys are going to love it. The flavor, I'm, I'm telling you, it's going to make you want to eat with your hands and slap it with that rice. I'm telling you because I did. I was like a little kid in my kitchen. My kids were laughing at me. But, Tori, it's delicious. It's the bomb, as we would say. Um, you guys got to try it out tomorrow. Um, I mean, it's delicious. And so if you guys haven't had jackfruit and you're a little afraid of it, we did a video, so it's on Instagram. You can see how we did it in three stages of breaking the, the jackfruit up. And we don't use the whole jackfruit. We use the pods inside of the jackfruit. And that's what we cook and we caramelize it with onions before we get started of doing our other ingredients. So you say you use the pods. What do you mean? It's little pods inside of a jackfruit that has a seed inside. So you want to strip it, kind of take the seed out, and take only the pod. And you want to kind of caramelize that pod and cook it down. It takes about 45 minutes to cook the jackfruit. Man, that's beautiful, man. We are excited about uh, you all tasting that and trying that out for the first time. Uh, we think you're going to be so happy and pleased about it. And um, so, yeah, Sonya, what you say, Sonya? Following on Instagram. That's right, right. Sissy's Follow Taco Sissy's Bar. Taco Bar on Instagram for all of the updates. And so, listen, we have a great guest that we're about to bring on uh, the Tori Muhammad Show with our co-host, Linda Perez. And it is a new cafe. Now, this is something... We're talking about, you know, I, my east side. This is I grew up on the east side of Chicago, 78th and Exchange, and um, they have opened up uh, Mary Jane CBD Cafe right on 71st and Yates. And uh, we have the uh, owner that's going to come on and talk to us in just a few minutes about this uh, new cafe. I'm so excited. So you're excited about that, I know, because I know you have some visions and some ideas 
um, for Sissy's Taco Bar, and uh, you're very interested in what we're going to hear from our brother, Chef Ra, Chef Raheem, who's going to tell us about Mary Jane CBD Cafe. Yeah, Sonya's doing that. She's doing the... Uh, <laughs> I am available for research and focus groups. <laughs> <laughs> it's for the people. It's for the people. For the right. people, for the man. People. I'm with hey. you. For the people. We, it's for the people. It's always for the people. <laughs> <laughs> we make sure it has its right health benefits. That's right. That's right. So, listen, we're going to show that. We're going to show you all how we do this because we're going to bring him uh, right on. In just a second here. One. One. All right. So, Man, like I was saying, I'm very pleased to have this young man on the Tory Muhammad Show. Um, I've been seeing him for a while. He's a chef extraordinaire everywhere. He's going to give you his whole resume, but I know him from Salon Restaurant. I know him from um, when Brother Yaya had a restaurant uh, flipping and dipping. I know him from um, the foodie spot, man. He Anytime, you know when the food is good. When you see Chef Raheem uh, in the background somewhere oh, wow. making sure that stuff is going in the right direction in terms of the food quality and the taste and all of that. So we are very excited, man, to have Chef Raheem here on the Tori Muhammad Show, of course, with my co-host, Linda Perez. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Can you hear me good? Yes, we can hear you good, man. How are you doing, oh, I'm sir? Wonderful. I'm wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you for having me on. Good. Pleasure man. to meet you, Ms. Perez. Hello, how you doing? Hello. Man, how you so, doing, Tori? Man, I'm doing excellent, man. Thankful by Allah's grace to be on top side of the earth. And, uh, man, we've been hearing the buzz, man, about uh, the Mary Jane Cafe. So, first of all, um, look, my Sonya's sitting up in her desk, in her chair. <laughs> She's all ears. Tell us, tell us, give us your resume, because I, I just gave a little quick brief part of it. But, man, tell us about your journey in food and how you have become to be such a uh, respected chef. Oh, now we can't hear you. What did you just do? We can't hear you at all now. Nope. Nothing. Nope. Okay, so you, you had the earbuds, you took them off, or you put them back in? We heard you when you had them in. You got the boys in the hood on today. Right, right, right. So, as we get his sound coming, yep, he's not on mute, of course, so... <clears throat> Okay, so he dipped out. Maybe he's going to come back in and we'll see, make sure it's going right. Uh, so, but this brother, man, has been, um, like I said, in a variety of places. So we're going to bring him back on. Okay, how's that? Can you hear me? Okay, we can hear you now. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Okay, great. I All think right, it's a snowstorm. about storm. your food journey. Sure thing. So, um, while well, I started... Uh, about 16 years ago, um, gradu uh, graduating from La Cordon Bleu um, Culinary School downtown Gold Coast. Um, and man, it's just been an incredible experience ever since. Um, I worked in several different restaurants, three to four star restaurants, um, and got the majority of my initial training after college at um, Table 52, which was then um, Celebrity Chef Art Smith Restaurant, who um, actually was Oprah's personal chef for years. And um, man, that, I, I gained a lot of knowledge and understanding of food from working in that fine dining experience. Um, I actually graduated as a baker um, when I did graduate school, but it was more jobs in the culinary industry. So I, I went into culinary and just been training and working with stellar chefs. So many I can shout out right now um, that really helped me to hone my skills. But um, as of late, 
maybe the last few years, uh, maybe like five years ago, I started becoming a personal chef, a private chef where I went into people's homes and people who had different ailments and had different um, sicknesses and needed to have a very particular diet. I helped them by preparing their weekly meals and teaching them how to prepare food for themselves so that they can not get sick when they eat. Um, people with like Crohn's disease and MS, a lot of those people need a very particular diet because their, their digestive systems are very sensitive. Um, so I did that for a while and from there, I went on to the University of Chicago as a chef and a resident halal expert on campus. Um, I learned a lot there because we were feeding thousands of thousands of people per day across the entire campus. So that was fun to learn how to manage large Explain values. I don't know what halal is. Explain what halal is. Oh, sure. So um, halal is the Islamic regulatory system for food so there's certain processes and procedures that go into preparing halal food and that is permissible to those who follow islamic rules and it's very similar to kosher food so that means this should be a really high quality when you uh, and by the way mary jane is halal <laughs> but um yep so and then from there, um, do, right during the pandemic, um, when, just before it started, um, I was working at the University of Chicago on the medical side. So it was very interesting to see the whole transition and the COVID scare and everyone getting sick and coming in. And I had to feed the doctors and nurses who were quarantined on certain levels in the rest, in the, um, hospital that couldn't leave those areas because they didn't want to infect anyone and they still had to work their long 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 shifts so i was there probably like uh 15 16 days straight with no off days you know trying to make sure that these people were getting fed so that was a heck of an experience and you know um to correlate mary jane cafe and to what i do in my experience um, I've learned that people with MS, while I was a private chef, a lot of my clients that had MS actually needed cannabis, cannabis in their diet in order to help with their flare ups and the inflammation that occurs. So that's when I first started studying cannabis and its effects when you eat it or digest it. My audio is still good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so now um, I'm on this. Well, I, just before opening Mary Jane, I helped several restaurants to, um, you know, get up and going and in their beginning stages. Um, some are very becoming super popular right now, such as um, Soul Shack and Can't Believe It's Not Me and Foodie Spot, which are all doing really good. So. Um, it was just a great honor to be able to be in on the ground level of those projects to see how things unfold, to see how the people are so excited about black owned businesses and so excited about having, you know, different food options. People love food. So now um, we're, I'm on this Mary Jane Cafe adventure and it's um, and we just completed our first month of being open yesterday. So it has been an absolutely great experience with the weather and all, with the, with the pandemic, with the weather, with it being the overall slow season for restaurants and other businesses in general. It's been a great, great, great time. So that's a little bit of my experience in a short clip. Beautiful. So when you opened Mary Jane, was it close to heart because of family or just your experience of working with others? So it was a combination like, um, you know, I, just seeing the effects that CBD has on people, um, being able to collaborate with family 
and friends to embark on this adventure, to work with my wife, Sister Maisha, who was such an impactful person in this whole process, and um, and other business owners in the area that give opportunities to people like me to um, you know try something out and see how it works. Um, shout out to Brother Akbar. Um, it's just it's, it, it was a combination of things. The pandemic really birthed this place. Um, you know, everyone was getting furloughed. Um, There's a lot of pressure on people. So many people are stressed out. I'm just trying to find, give them an outlet that is a healthy outlet to help Absolutely. relieve, you know, stress. Yeah. And when you say, brother, you say you're talking about Kurt Muhammad, who, um, yes, you at his location. His he was just on and talked about the 71st Street uh, shopping. Yes, center. yes. We're trying to make the South Shore look like. Well, not look like, but be as as nice as North Shore. You know what I mean? There you go. Absolutely. Create our own version. Yes, that's right. That's exactly. right. So, with the CP, you know, just to give you some information too. Uh, you know, I have a taco bar. So when I heard you did the C CBD infused, I need a mentor. I need some education, some one on one, because that is our goal to have different sauces for our tacos, but a health benefit. They're, they can choose. Exactly. So when I first told Torre back in July, it was an argument. I was against it, man. I said, what? <laughs> that would be great. You want to put weed in your tacos? <laughs> I said, no, you're not understanding it. It's CBD. <laughs> like, there's health benefits to it. He's like, uh, okay, yeah, whatever. I'm like, I've been reading it. I've been trying to educate myself. There's different things, different ones, different you know levels. And I'm like, I just need a mentor. So when I heard you on a show and I'm like, Oh, I need this brother. I need him. And so yes. I'm glad you're around. Um, and I see you worked with great people, even with, um, food spotty. That's my other favorite place. Um, yes. <laughs> so I'm, I'm amazed by it. Um, are you open today? <laughs> uh, close on Mondays. Close on Mondays. We got to get yeah. by that tomorrow. Hey, chef yes. Ron, look, look, when she heard about the Mary Jane cafe, and she heard that it was a Muslim owner. She couldn't wait to tell me. She like, see. <laughs> I said, are you going to promote him? That's your bubble. <laughs> so I'm exactly. learning, too. I'm learning, too. Yeah, um, we all I had are. preconceived notions with just because of the connotations and the, and the history. Right. So, you know, I, I knew people that didn't have a medical condition that got a fake medical card so they could get, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, so all that stuff. Was in my mind, but so tell us a little bit about so, all of the services. So you're serving food. Um, there's a dispensary, right. right? Tell us everything that's happening at Mary Jane. Right. So this is yes, this is the first um, black-owned dispensary cafe in Chicago, um, and we're different because okay, first of all, you don't have to get any everything infused if you don't want to. This is an option. We're just informing people on the health properties and the benefits. So, but a lot of people are interested in that, and they end up um, infusing their food. So, we do different sauces that's infused, um, chocolate sauces and caramels, and um, honey jerk sauces and chipotle sauces that's infused, and um, our teas as well. So. What we do is, first of all, we try to start off with just some simple ingredients. Not a, nothing there is boxed or, you know, try to be as fresh as possible. You know, so on one hand, you're getting the health benefits, period, just because it's healthy food. And then we add a boost to that with our CBD products, which we use 100% hemp, organically grown hemp, you know, and... We have all the sources and done the research to make sure that it is what it is. And then on the other side of it, we have CBD wellness products. Um, that's because so many of us need some type of healing, you know. So we have different tinctures and different um, salves and topicals and um, 
a, a number of different items, a whole lot I haven't even brought out yet because I'm slowly introducing to people. But yeah, so um, let's talk about some of the benefits of those uh, tinctures. For sure. So CBD period, um, cannabinol, right? This is something that's in our system, in everybody's system anyway. Uh, we have an entire system in our body called the endocannabinoid system, which helps regulate all the functions in our body. Um, uh, this is um, opposite of the TAC that you would find out on the street, loud and all the other names they have for it, which have been laced with different chemicals. You know what I mean? So this is... Um, directly from the cannabis sativa hemp. And um, uh, the major benefit is some, creating something called homeostasis, which is the balance throughout your body's systems and functionality. So um, a lot of times when you're stressed out, it's because you have a chemical imbalance. Or a lot of times when there's um, other ailments going on in your body, it's because of an imbalance. So this CBD is supposed to create balance in your body and its functions. And there's a long list of other healing properties as well. Um, for instance, people with inflammation, CBD instantly attacks the inflammation and causes the reversal of that process. People with um, anxiety, stress. Uh, one of my favorite items we have is our uh, cooling cream or fire nice as well like anytime i have a headache i just rub a little across my head and it, <laughs> it instantly causes a cooling effect and a calming effect you know um if you used to get one of our freshly brewed elixirs well i'll have to give you all a little detail on elixir in a minute but um we add cbd to that and when you drink that you feel an instant effect on your body okay so I have a question. Mm -hmm. do you have a pamphlet or to educate people or do you do classes or yes yeah, so actually something i'm launching within the next couple of days is um some consulting so we'll be able to schedule time for people to come and get a little consulting on um, what they have, what issues they have or face and what products is best for them. And we'll make it a very personal, intimate situation where we're catered directly to that person. Um, there's a little info online. Say again. I said, make sure you put the appointment. Oh, okay, let me jot that in. you too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, so it's, yeah, man, it's really a lot to it, and it's very new, so a lot of people are, you know, still learning about this. It's been kept away as a secret for a while because it couldn't be monetized. Right, so tell us the address and uh, the website. Sure, so um, you can go to maryjanecbdcafe.com or Mary, Mary Jane Cafe Chicago .com, either one, it'll send you to our website. The address is 7112 South Yates Boulevard. It's east on 71st Street. Like It's right at the end of Lakeshore Drive and in the intersection, right across from um, South Shore Culture Center. 7112 South Yates Boulevard. Okay, so you on the 71st Street side? Right, yeah, right on 71st Street. A little tricky. So when you when you planned your menu, you took in consideration people's health when you created that menu? So what I, I took a few things into consideration. Um, first, the way we prepare the food. And um, some of the items on there are a lot better option than what you would find typically within the area. So I looked at the overall menu for the area and wanted to have something a little different and um, something that's quality. So some of our main um, 
or best sellers actually for the month of, of uh, this last month our best seller was our grilled um, honey jerk salmon kebabs meal which is two nice size skewers of grilled salmon filet on kebabs over a uh, yellow basmati rice that's nice tossed with um, oil and um, spinach and cilantro and then a nice salad so we just tried to give um, some nice um, healthy options we have the cinnamon chipotle chicken we have a vegan kebab meal as well which is a vegan sausage and then um, we do a rack of lamb and different lamb specials every week we do a different soup and a different um sandwich special each week awesome man right that's exciting i love the mixture there because you know um i think it's important to have a variety of things so you got something that's fish something that's uh land animal something that's vegan so then that way people can feel comfortable coming together in a group and nobody you know, it's isolated because they don't eat a certain thing or you took somebody to something where it's only one thing. Right. Um, so right. it's good to have that variety. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, you, and you know what? And I was just mm-hmm. talking to Tori about the menu. And um, and I think I'm cautious too when it comes to my menu and what ingredients we use, um, especially yeah. if we're, we're trying to make the change in our community because we know food infects people, their minds, yeah. their mood swings. And I was telling him I was so disgusted. I was in Restaurant Depot shopping, and I seen this couple pile up canola oil. Canola oil has a long-term effect of memory loss. And I'm like, I, it makes me not want to eat out anymore. And then I'm looking at people buying pre-breaded fried chicken. I'm like, uh, where's oh, buddy. fresh? And I was telling him, I was like, this makes me not want to go out anymore. Right. Because people are not the way cautious the way I am or the way I think, but people are quick to make the money but don't really care what they're serving our people. We have to really think about that. Yes. Yes. That's so important. Like um food directly impacts or our diet directly impacts everything else that goes on in our life. It has so many different chemicals. Like you mentioned, the imbalance can happen so quickly just from having the, the wrong mixture of the food. That's right. I think that it's, we've been talking about this for a minute, but one of the things that I would be so interested in is helping to organize and connect with all of the farmers, all of the black farmers, all of the holistic organic uh, farmers that we can gather and then figure out what restaurants need in that region. So, of course, if we're talking about, you know, Chicago area, then what are the, most of our restaurants purchasing on a regular basis that it could start pre-planning and make orders from these farmers, and the farmers can grow the spinach, they can grow the carrots, they can grow, you know, some of the things that most restaurants use, and then now that's a locally you know, organic, locally grown uh, concept that is great for marketing, but then it also, of course, is great in in terms of us understanding more of the sources of the food food. that we're eating because I am. I am a a straight-up advocate for black-owned restaurants, but, of course, you know, we want to we want to make sure they're serving us the best. I don't we don't want to celebrate and promote somebody who's feeding us uh, garbage. Absolutely. Not at all. And, and you know, um, Tori, when we think about that, even when we're promoting or we're in business, we have to really be mindful of people. And we don't think we just think about making money. Um, but it's it's coming and it's the change is coming. The conversation is coming. People are talking about more vegan. People are talking about eating healthy now. Um, and so now the restaurants have to look into that kind of movement of changing their menus and updating. Some people are content to these old menus um, and then they're struggling in business because people are not eating like that anymore. People have changed their eating habits. And also our people have changed the eating habits of, you know how you can go and get a, what's those 10 foot sandwiches and a bag of chips and a one liter for $5. (laughs) Well, now you're going to get a small sandwich, 
small bag of chips and something small to drink, but you're paying ten, but it's more healthy and it's the 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 amount is not big. And so that's another thing. It's small plates, as we can say. So we're not eating yep. big anymore. And that's what restaurants have to look at too. But let's get away from this um pre frozen food and already made to just drop it yeah, in the oil for a few seconds. Let's get away from that from our people. And I really I'm like a strong believer of that. That's right. I mean, sometimes Agreed. the food is raised here, then it's shipped to China. Oh, that's what I was gonna processed, say. Processed and then shipped back. And that's what I was gonna say. And I like wow. and I'm sorry, but I do shop at Whole Foods for some of my restaurant stuff. But I like mm-hmm. that because in Whole Foods it says local. And so I try to buy local because I know it didn't travel so far. And I'm a exactly. conscious mind person. So I do shop at Whole Foods for the vegan options and the things in that nature because I'm like, oh, it's local. It's here, it's quick. But we do need to pull together. I and mean, we have this conversation. Restaurants, we need to learn how to pull together, get our delivery so we can buy in bulk and then use the black farmers and use the different local farmers in our community because there's so many out here. And not just talk about it, but be about it and have the action behind it. That's right. That's right. Yeah, there's a lot of initiatives that are taking place right now that um, want to support local restaurants, local businesses with um, food because they see that it's a food crisis that's about to occur, already happening um, with lots of food deserts, especially in the urban areas, you know, so... um, that's something else. That's another initiative that I'm actually working on with a, a non-for-profit organization um, where we hope to provide those options, those fresh produce options, um, especially in the South Shore area and then abroad from there, you know. Absolutely. Man, beautiful. I know, I know we're switching gears here, here, but there was something I had to ask you about. Um, I don't eat uh i try not to eat a lot of pasta but if i do it's some mac and cheese and uh tell us about this mac and cheese you got uh this smoked cheddar mac brulee oh okay so that yeah all right so um yeah that's one of our side items you know i have a this i have a smaller space um so i kept the menu a little bit smaller so i figured if i'm gonna have some items on there, they're gonna be some really stellar items. Uh, so this is a classic style mac and cheese, but uh, it's a smoked cheddar mac and cheese. So I use uh, smoked cheddar and I use smoked Gouda cheese in the cheese sauce. Um, everybody's familiar with elbow macaroni, so we use elbow, but there's so many other options, right? But, um, and then um, we brulee it. That means you add a flame to something to finish it so it's it's in a really rich homemade cheese sauce with smoked cheddar and smoked gouda and then we add uh, another uh, layer of fun chunks no I no chunks it's creamy velvety smooth and then we add a layer of fontina cheese at the we end somewhere. Oh. chef ron we stopped somewhere oh. and uh you know, supported somebody, and there it, it, it were chunks in it. And we're not going to say any names. We're going to talk oh, to them okay. and encourage them to do better. Oh, but What's that? Yeah, that's why she said that. <laughs> chunks? Chunks All right. even melted. Like, All right. like, it was like government cheese chunks. Oh, no. Oh, no. That wasn't mac and cheese. That was noodles and chunks. Mac and government cheese. <laughs> <laughs> My kids is like, Mom, where you get this from? Don't worry. Don't eat it. No. Don't where they do that at? <laughs> we're not going to say. We're not going to say. <laughs> We, no, don't listen, say it. We don't focus it. on the positive, and we 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 celebrate the positive, and we try to encourage uh, when it's not that offline. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's that's another because I'm another story. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man, that's that that item's awesome. Um, our elixirs are absolutely awesome. So that was something I developed a while back, where you know. I was actually I was I was watching a movie um, Death Becomes Her I think remember that old comedy uh, with mm-hmm, Bruce, Bruce Willis, Willis, Willis. And then, right so they were drinking a drink that revitalized them and brought them back to their younger age right so I was I was watching that I was thinking what can I develop that can actually have a really 
impact, a real impact on people when they consume it. So I, was, I started looking up different items and ginger is a very, very, very old and strong, yes. very yes. healing item, right? So I, I made this drink where I brew ginger until you couldn't brew it anymore mm. and extract mm. all the nutrients out of it. And then we add other herbs and spices to it to create an instant effect on you when you drink um, the drink. So that's something else we have. We have three different kinds. Man, we looking forward, we're looking forward to come over there and trying that one. Yes, the ginger. I love some ginger. And tell us yes. about that dessert, that um, the Louisiana uh, pecan candy. Wow, so that's there because my family's from New Orleans. <laughs> and that's that's the main reason that's there. Yes, sir. and it's like a staple for the family, right? So um, that is a homemade caramel praline. Use a few different names for it. This one is straight from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and it's just butter, sugar, pecans, and a lot of goodness. <laughs> so there's no science behind that one. It's just good. Boy, you got the studio in here licking their lips in here, brother. I gotta wait till tomorrow. Right, right. We gotta wait till tomorrow. <laughs> we have, man, our desserts are really um the bigger, our biggest seller on desserts right now is our peach cobbler pound cake. So get out of here. Peach cobbler that, pound cake. Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry we're closed today. I'm about to go but run tomorrow. around the snow. I'm about to go roll around the snow for a minute. <laughs> yeah, we'll that's that tomorrow, a, uh, God willing. <laughs> yes, that man, that's so, so delicious. Yeah, brother, we appreciate you for coming on the show, man, and giving us an update. Uh, we look forward to coming by and uh, showcasing and telling the world about uh, our food experience over there, and, and, and posting, of course, on our social media. And uh, we definitely appreciate you. And listen, man, well, yes. Tell people again where they can connect with you, how they can get to the website and the address, because some people are just tuning in. Sure. So, um, you know, we have our social media, of course, Mary Jane Cafe Chicago. That's on Instagram and Facebook. Please follow. Um, you can order through DoorDash or Grubhub straight through Instagram. Um, and check us out on our website, Mary Jane Cafe chicago or mary jane cbd cafe.com either one um check us out we're on 7112 south yates boulevard uh, we have a we have so much that's coming we're gonna have a nice outdoor seating as soon as it heats up with music and live cooking so yeah just check us out i know i'll be on um, tuesday someday, someday. <laughs> right it's on right. Um, out. So, Chef Raheem, we appreciate you, man. Thank you for coming on the Tori Muhammad Show. We're here at What's In It For The Black People Media, this new uh, new media, social media radio station, man, where we are celebrating everything that is important to black people. The question is always asked here, what's in it for the black people? So, um, man, I'm telling everybody, in, if you are listening to us, first of all, if you need to get your marketing straight if you need to if you need to strategize and make sure that you are building your target audience don't wait don't wait until you're distressed right start making sure that you're planning and strategizing for marketing now we can help with that at bean soup media uh we help you strategize we help you execute and we help you uh to find your target audience and so if you want to make sure that you are seen and heard What's in it for the black people? Media is an excellent place to advertise. And, of course, we can help facilitate that whole nine for you. Uh, that's what we do at Being Soup Media. So we're going to close out now. We thank you all for coming. And listen, again, if you want to get some incredible tacos, right, authentic street tacos with um, some international flavor, right, because she got – uh, Chef Ross, Sissy's Taco Bar, man, she has the um, Sriracha Shrimp Taco. She has the Cajun Jack Taco. She Ooh. has the Nopales Latino Mexican um, uh, Tom Girl Taco. 
And she has the blackened salmon taco. Of course, that's, you know, Caribbean flavor. So, man, she's tiptoeing across the country, across the world, yes. bringing some international flavor to these tacos. So come out tomorrow and check her out for the new pop-up at 1200 East 79th Street at the Woodline. An incredible collaboration. She's going to be there Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 12 to 7. And look, it might be cold, but we sell hot chocolate with cinnamon, nutmeg, and vanilla. So get you a cup when you come out and get your tacos tomorrow. So you got two places to get some great food that you heard about here on the Tori Muhammad Show. We have Mary Jane CBD Cafe, 71st and Yates, and we have Sissy's Taco Bar. So listen, hey, get on out. We know this is Chicago, man. They're going to clear the streets up, right? It's all this coming down. Don't even worry about it. Just make sure you get booted and suited. Put your boots on and come out and get some great food tomorrow from these two great places. Yes, yes. Awesome. Yes. Can't wait. Thanks. Thanks. Um, I mean, we have to reach out after this show because I really need some one-on-one with the CBD because I have 40 sauces that I need to come up with. Oh, yeah. Oh, All yeah. right. So we appreciate y'all. Love y'all. We love y'all. Never forget, as long as we got a bowl of bean soup, you've got half. Peace. Peace. W-I-I-F-T-B-P-M. W-I-I-F-T-B-P-M